Hi, today we're having a go at photographing goldfinches on teasel. So this is teasel, it's a regular food plant for goldfinches, you'll see them land on this on a regular basis. There's only two species of birds that I know feed on it, which is goldfinches and lesser red poles. I've seen other birds land on it occasionally, robins and blue tits, but they, they're uncomfortable, it's difficult for them to land on it. And in fact even goldfinches struggle sometimes, you see them adjusting their feet as they land. So I've, I've just cut three off, things always look good in threes or odd numbers and you could use a flower pot for this, I haven't got a flower pot here so I've just got a, a food container full of bird food but a flower pot with soil or sand in it is fine, just holds them upright and goldfinches like lesser red poles which I've done a YouTube film on recently feed on niger seed so this is a niger seed feeder you buy from the pet food shops Full of niger seed and we'll just pinch a tiny bit out of there and all we do is drop it into the back of the teasel so you can't see it from the the camera side it falls in very naturally very easy to do and you don't need very much of it as i mentioned in the red pole film Niger seed needs, needs to be fresh. Don't buy this in bulk. Buy it in small two kilo bags and keep it fresh because it seems to go off. If you've got an old bag of Niger seed, the birds don't like it. Don't know why, it looks and smells exactly the same. It doesn't go mouldy, but the birds don't like it when it's old. And that's it, that's how you photograph uh, goldfinches. When you've got a feeding station for photography, it really is a good idea to have some sort of tabletop to work from. You're up in the air a little bit and most of your props and sets are easier to put up when you've got a table there. Now we're going to put the Niger seed feeder up using this old tripod. Very convenient things old tripods. And if we just put this up next to the, the teasel That'll be fine. They will find that quite naturally. They're coming for this, which they're used to coming into. They see the teasel, they probably see the seed as well, and they'll fly across and land on there. Check your background, make sure you've got a nice, clean, diffused background behind it. And that's it, very simple, ready to go. The other thing you can use is burdock, very similar sort of plant. It's burdock's the stuff that clings to your, your jumper very, very readily. You can put burdock up and they'll land on that too. We're inside the hide now and today I'm using an external monitor. This is because I like to do slow motion video and when you're shooting in slow motion you have to manually focus and having a larger screen made by eYoYo makes that easier to do but it doesn't make it easy. It is still a struggle. So it helps a little bit, but it's only a marginal advantage. I do have peaking on, so if you stare at the moss on that log, you can see the moss is going red at times. I'm manually changing the focus, and the part that is sharp turns red. That helps again, but it's still not perfect. I really do wish the camera would autofocus in slow motion. And we'll do the same now on this teasel, but it's even harder to see the red pixelization. So here's some goldfinches on the teasel. This is at normal speed now, so the camera will autofocus. Once they find the teasel, they will spend a lot of time on it feeding. It's a fairly easy and reliable way of photographing goldfinches. Once they're coming into your feeder on a regular basis, they will readily adapt to landing on the teasel that you provide them. So now in slow motion, I believe the recently released Sony A1 camera films at 120 frames per second 4K slow motion and autofocuses. And I've not come across a camera that does that before. So these are taken on a previous day now when there was a bit of snow on the floor. My 
Panasonic G9 does 180 frames per second, this is normal speed at the moment, and the Olympus does 120 frames per second. And now we'll look at a few stills pictures that I've taken in recent days and in previous years as well. This is the burdock that I mentioned earlier, another sort of similar plant to the teasel. Its goldfinches will go to quite readily. It's a smaller seed head and very sticky. Sticks to your clothes very, very readily. You should always be taking a note of your background. Make sure you've got a nice, clean, uncluttered background. And goldfinches go around in flocks, so you stand a good chance of getting all three heads occupied at the same time. They also squabble a lot, but I've never had a great deal of success with squabbling goldfinches, but a lot of photographers have. It's a good subject to do fighting. And some very wintry shots here with a snowstorm coming in. These were taken a few years ago. We don't get this heavy snow anymore in the Midlands, unfortunately. I'm still young enough to enjoy it. In the spring months, you can move your feeder, your Niger seed feeder, across to where the hedgerow is, co covered in blossom, or bring some blossom to the, the bird. I think that's pear blossom. And the other thing you can do in the summer is watch out for goldfinches feeding on the thistle and just put a hide up wherever they're feeding on a regular basis. If the patch of thistle is not too large, then there's a good chance of them coming in. And these are just on garden flowers in, a, in the back garden, feeding on natural seed heads. Thanks for watching.